Hello YouTube, I'm Bill Hensley and today I'm going to take my wife's 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV in to have some service done on it. As many of you already know, my wife and I are getting ready to go on vacation and we'll be taking our Chevrolet Bolt EV on its first ever long distance road trip from Maine all the way to Virginia. Coincidentally, we were just informed last week, shortly after uploading our one month review of the Bolt, that there were two recall notices out for it. One of the notices was for the infotainment center, an update that I had talked about in my last video, but one that I had stated we could do without. The other recall notice, however, had to do with the high voltage battery and some reprogramming of control module 2. After doing some research online, I found out that only a small percentage of owners were truly affected. GM, however, is recommending that all 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV owners receive this update as it adds an extra layer of protection in the form of better monitoring of the cells. Should a cell start to go bad, GM could reach out to you quicker before you would even notice something was up and could schedule you in to have the whole battery replaced if necessary. After talking with my wife, we decided that it would be a good idea to have both software updates performed. As much as we would miss MP4 playback if it was truly removed, this would be a sure way to document everything and possibly create a case with GM so that later it could be brought back in a future release. Alright, and before I head out here, I'll just uh, check one more time. I'll show you guys that if I scroll down to software information and I go to software update, it's going to check for an update. It's going to show that I am on the uh, latest update that it can get over there, right there, version 14.1.0. So because of that, if I go back to, oh, let's see here, go to my apps here, and I click on gallery, and I do have the uh, USB flash drive. I got a small one. I got a little 64 gigabyte low profile. I, I love that thing. But it is formatted in the proper format, uh, FAT32. So therefore, I can click on the movie tab, and I can click on my disk, and any of the uh, MP4s that I have loaded up here, I can just click on any one of them. And there we go. It's playing a movie. Now here's here's where it gets interesting though. So let me um let's uh we'll skip ahead here and I'll turn down the volume. Uh if I were to put the car in drive, okay, and I start moving, this is what happens. See? It will not play a video as you're driving. I mean, right now it's more dangerous that I'm <laughs> videotaping this as I'm driving, but yeah, look, it's it has a picture of a, uh, a clock there, and if I come to a stop and I put it back in park, well, actually, I guess you don't even have to put it in park, but once I come to a stop, I'm parked right now, It's it plays the movie. You put it back into drive, and you take off, it's going to disappear and it shows a picture of a clock. So I don't see how that is illegal, but you know, if it's illegal in a state to have to be playing a movie, then just take that feature away for that state. When I arrived at the dealership, I was seen right away, which I was thankful for because it was a nasty stormy day out when I had this done. It didn't take very long for the service tech to go find my vehicle and bring it into the service shop, at which point he got right to business and started with the high voltage battery software update. This update seemed to take about an hour to perform, after which the service tech greeted me in the waiting room and told me that he had just started the radio software update. All in all, the two updates combined took only about an hour and a half to complete, and before I knew it, I was on my way back home with an up-to-date Bolt EV. So now that our Bolt EV is up-to-date, the first noticeable change is with the infotainment center. As you can see here, Android Auto is now full screen and no longer has those black bars on either side condensing everything into a smaller framed image. If I navigate to the settings and scroll down to software information, when I click on software update now, after it's done, checking for updates, you can see that I'm now on the true latest software update, which is version 14.5.0. Now when I take my USB flash drive here, 
which I know is in the proper file format of FAT32, and I go ahead and plug into the car, you can see that it no longer gives you the option to choose a movie, because the movie tab has been completely removed in this latest software update. So if nothing else, I can confirm that the movie tab no longer exists on version 14.5.0, which is too bad, because it's a feature I really liked, and it's not like you could play a movie while driving anyways. All in all, I'm glad I got both of the updates done. As far as the battery pack update is concerned, it's good to know that should GM detect any anomalies with my pack, I'll be notified well in advance before it becomes any real issue for us. And as far as the uh, radio update is concerned, as much as I'm going to miss MP4 playback, it'd be interesting to see if GM does what Tesla does and starts offering updates over the air for their customers. It'd be nice to see them uh, fix that issue and bring back MP4 playback. And with any luck, maybe this video will go viral and that will become a reality. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Bill Hensley, and I'll see you later.